do you even own another shirt? Yeah. This mm -hmm. is like the third time you've worn that for these videos. But I'll, but I like. Go change. Welcome back to Just One Cent. I'm Jared. I have a new shirt. We have a new episode of Gotham to talk about. So let's get going. Episode two starts out with the proverbial face from the shadows coming forth to light. And we meet Catherine, the ambassador of sorts for the unnamed group. Her and Bruce had a conversation and she said the name wasn't important, but it kind of is. It's the Court of Owls. That's kind of a big deal. An ultimatum was given that may set the tone for the rest of the season, if not the series. I'll let you watch to figure out what that ultimatum is. It was quite monumental. And now for a new segment in our Just One Cent Gotham series, Dean's Comment of the Week. <clears throat> Bruce outsmarting the Court of Owls. Nice. Wait, disregard that comment. Please don't make the deal with them, Bruce. Use common sense. This has been Dean's Comment of the Week. I think the ultimate is going to drive the story forward well. Uh, it's going to make for some interesting back and forth between Bruce and what he's going to do next. And we'll talk about more about what Bruce is actually going to do next at the end of the episode. Valerie Vale does come back and boy does she have a personality. She enters this episode by having a conversation with our favorite rogue detective, bounty hunter, former cop guy, Jim Gordon. Yeah. Uh, and she has a good idea that leads to really the, what happens in the rest of this episode where her and Jim team up to try to find Penguin. And wow, in the first few minutes of the show, we get to see Jim and Barbara back on screen together and the instant chemistry those actors had with one another, uh, whether it's the actors or the characters, um, you really can't tell because they blend it in so seamlessly and they just make great television while on screen together. Um, and just getting to see Barbara still be kind of crazy, even though she has a paper saying that she's sane, Mm, I don't think she is, um, but just seeing her toy with Jim was just I intriguing. You wanted to see what happened next. I found myself laughing at the situation. Uh, it was just entertaining. Some folks are speculating that she's actually going to be Harley Quinn online. I've seen uh, several people talk about that. I don't believe it, and I don't believe it should be. Uh, she's doing a great job as Barbara King. Uh, yeah, she's a little crazy. Yeah, she does have some Harley Quinn kind of antics, but She's Barbara, and she's perfect as she is. She shouldn't change. Okay, in last week's episode, we got to see Ivy for a little bit, but we didn't know what really happened to her by the end of the episode. This one, we see her sorta safe and sound, uh, washed up on the rocks, and um, we get to see the new actress take over the role. Um, Maggie Gia, Gay Gia, Giha. Okay, so I fixed my mistake from last week. I actually put the actress's name in the notes, but this time I didn't look up how to pronounce her name. So I'm sorry, Maggie Giha. Gia. Giha. But yeah, she takes over the role quite well. Some could say that she does a killer job. This episode had a lot of uh, One Piece focus, it seemed. Um, it had the GCPD fighting against fish and her monsters. And in the third act, we see Penguin who uh, rallied some citizens and civilians around him to form his own kind of like little Penguin army. And um, there was a big fight throughout the entire episode. Half the episode was kind of devoted to this fight. It took up a lot of the content. I think it may have went a little too long or they didn't just uh, show enough characters just right because they flashed through some of Mooney's monsters uh, maybe a really just a little too quickly. We didn't get to see a lot of who they were and um, The fight was brutal at times uh, almost making the viewer uncomfortable um, But honestly, that's how it would be if you had police officers taking on mutated people that had superpowers so Realistic yet uncomfortable in this episode We also get to see more of the tension that's building up between Barnes and Gordon And I'm really intrigued by it because while we know that Jim will one day make it back to the force how is the question so we get to really see you know what's going to drive jim to join the police again and eventually lead on to become the commissioner one thing i can say i'm definitely disappointed about in this episode is there was no ed at all and I, like i said last week i really loved ed that whole character and he wasn't in here at all not even for one frame as talked about at the beginning of the show what is bruce going to do next well the ending left us with a good clue 
He meets Doppel Bruce. What's gonna happen? How is he gonna take finding out that he has like a clone twin? What's Alfred gonna think now that he has two Bruces to put up with? We don't know, but we'll have to find out next week. And that's a good cliffhanger. But speaking of good cliffhangers, cliffhanger, cliffhanger. But speaking of good cliffhangers, we were left with a very powerful one. We end the episode with this scene. Yeah, that's Lee getting off a train in Gotham City. Why is she back? What's she gonna say to Jim? Is his new relationship gonna mess with her as much as her new relationship messed with him? What happened to the other dude? There's so many questions depicted in one imagery, her getting off a train, that you have to watch next week's episode. And I'm greatly looking forward to it because I wanna know what happens next. And as they left us with a cliffhanger, we're gonna leave you with a cliffhanger because next week's episode of Just One Cent is gonna look just a little bit different. How will it look? How will it be different? You'll have to tune in next week to find out, and we hope to see you then. Bye bye. Be happy. Be happy. No, say bye bye in a happy way. Oh, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.